I'm not gonna lie. Hands down, this has gotta be my favorite project so far. That's why I am so excited to show you how I made this pondless water fountain fire feature combo. <laughs> it's pondless because the water goes right into this reservoir below. It's really cool. Thought of it myself. I'm also gonna show you how to carve these faux rocks. How hard could it be with an optional decorative propane box? Honestly, this project was very easy to do. Anybody can do this, so <laughs> let's make something really freaking cool. I just wanted to take a minute to let you know that this is not a sponsored video, but I do want to thank RapidSet and EasyFirePits.com for providing the materials and all the hardware for this video, no questions asked. Thank you both for your continued unconditional support for the channel. All right, we're gonna start this build off by building the base and we're not gonna fuss around with this too much. We're gonna accomplish this by grabbing a plastic water heater pan. Also, make sure to cover up the big gaping hole with duct tape. You go ahead and fill this up with whatever you want. Cheap concrete, expensive concrete. I happen to have some rapid set concrete mix on hand, so that's what I used. Make sure to use some kind of metal reinforcement. Now, I'm using rapid set, so I'm not gonna bother, but uh, I probably should. Um, I should. I probably will. No, I'm not. I'm not going to. But I probably should. And I'm gonna regret it. It'll be. It'll be fine. Now, if you watch the channel, you've seen me do this a million times. You know how to do this. But if you haven't, and this is your first time, go ahead and pour five quarts of water in the bucket. Pour the concrete mix in the bucket. Mix it up real good to a peanut butter consistency. Eh, maybe a oatmeal consistency. Pour it out into the pan trowel it out nice and flat, and then make yourself a nice rough texture with a mason brush, or any kind of brush you like. Now, while that's cooking, any kind of bushes that are in your way, just rip them out. Dead ones, live ones, it doesn't matter. If it's in your way, get it out of there. Oh yeah, you're right. My wife is gonna kill me. Go ahead and dig down about two inches and tamp that down real good. Then lay out some paver base about one inch thick and tamp that down real good as well. Now by this time, your base should be all done cooking. Go ahead and demold that. Throw your pan down on the base. Throw down your two solid concrete blocks. And then just go ahead and throw the concrete base right on top. Now, I don't know that it's necessary to mortar this down or glue it down, but I'm just gonna go ahead and use some rapid set construction adhesive. And your base is done, so moving on. Now, let's set the center blocks. And this is the easy part. The best part is, is it only requires four 16 inch cinder blocks and two eight inch cinder blocks. Once you have the blocks lined up where you want them, make sure to trace the perimeter of the blocks before you take them off. This will help you realign them when you start placing them back on the disc. Also, don't forget to chip out or drill a hole behind the bottom block for the water line. And we're just gonna simply glue these together with the Rapid Set Flexible Construction Adhesive. Now, I know this is not the proper way to glue these blocks together. The proper way would be to mortar the blocks together, but we're not making a structure here. This is gonna be a small water feature. So using the Rapid Set Construction Adhesive is gonna be just fine. It's gonna be plenty strong for what we needed to do. Now let's move on to making the concrete bowls, which you've seen me make these in a previous video before, only this time we're going to color it, and we're gonna add this cool little pour spout on end. Now this is very easy to do, and usually I use Rapid Set Mortar Mix for this kind of project, but today I'm using the Rapid Set Cementol. Absolutely no reason for it. Now, you can use any bowls that you want, but I am gonna use this really great plastic mixing bowl set, and I'm gonna leave a link down below for this particular bowl set. But I'm gonna use the nine inch bowl and the eight inch bowl for this particular project. We're gonna start by mixing up the Cementol. It is mixed at a four parts product to one part water ratio. Um, in this case, for these size bowls, one quart of cementol seems to work for this particular project with eight ounces of water. 
Now, this is completely optional, but I've added the Quickrete Terracotta Concrete Color into this. Yeah, how much do you use? I honestly have no idea for something this small. I just poured a couple of splashes in and called it good. Mix that up really good, then add a couple of tablespoons of the flow control to give it that pancake batter consistency. Also, don't forget to coat the bowls with WD-40. You're gonna have a much easier time demolding this. Then you just pour the product in the bigger bowl, set the smaller bowl in the center, lay a board across the top, then place something heavy on top. After that, I took this one inch dowel and I cut it at about a quarter inch thickness. Then I simply sank it between the bowls until it was buried about halfway down. Now, usually you can demold rapid set products in one hour. Once you add color into it, it's gonna set up just a bit slower. So give yourself an hour and a half to two hours maybe. And then you should be good. Perfect. Now go ahead and take your little plug out. And then you're probably gonna have a little bit of material left over that you gotta break off. Get to that right away. Chip out the rest of the material. Be real ginger about it. And then you can file it clean. I simply took a three quarter inch copper sleeve and cut some tombstone shapes out of them. And you can actually get two per sleeve. And then we're just gonna glue this in place with rapid set construction adhesive and be done with it. And just like that, you have a really cool concrete bowl with a pour spout. Now for the fire bowl, I've gone ahead and glued a one inch dowel for the burner mount, a one inch dowel for the copper pour spout, and a three quarter inch dowel for the water line. All three of these dowels are cut at three quarter inch length, which will also help us keep the concrete bowl sides at a consistent thickness. Now I'm just going to assemble the six inch ring burner in the bowl and the water line. But first I wanna seal everything to make sure that water doesn't go anywhere but the pour spout. Let's turn our attention to the stylish propane box and we're not gonna fuss around with this too much because this is not the star of the show. <laughs> I am, I mean, the water feature is. It's 21 and three quarter inch high by 17 inches by 17 inches. And of course we're gonna use pallet wood. If you don't wanna make this out of a pallet, you can simply use one bys and two by twos. After you disassemble your pallet and cut all your parts to size, start with the lid. The lid is simple. It's simply five one by fours joined together by a one and a half inch strip by 14 inches. Make sure to screw from the back as to hide the screw heads. Put that aside and start with your front and back assemblies. These are also simple. Join two one by sixes with a one by four in the middle with inch and a half strip by 14 inches. Again, screwing from the back to hide the screw heads. Then simply attach the legs with three pocket holes. Oh, and don't forget the three quarter inch strip cleats on the bottom for the floor. Then for the left and the right hand sides, do the same thing minus the legs. Join all your assemblies together, again using pocket hole screws, and install the bottom. Install the lid with hinges of your choosing. Next, install the shut off key valve. Drill a hole in the back and install the lead hose. Then install the tank hose and regulator, and you are done. All right, so here's the hard part about this project is the sculpting, but it doesn't have to be. You can get as artsy fartsy with this as you want or not at all, or just have somebody else do it for you. But I did it with the rapid set mortar mix, of course. Now, if you wanna see this in more detail, watch my video on how to parge with rapid set mortar mix. I go into much greater detail about how to do this. But the two biggest words of advice I have on a project like this is 
do not do this on a hot day and do not do this in direct sunlight. I purposely waited for the sun to be on the other side of the shed while I did this. Those two things can cut your time in half. Now I find it very helpful to have a plan or a drawing so that you know where you're going with this. I started by wetting the block down, making it nice and damp to give the mortar something to grab onto and to give the product more moisture. That's very important. I started by coating the block with a, a very thin quarter inch layer of mortar mix. After I got everything nice and flat, I took a damp sponge and I lightly rubbed the surface, exposing that aggregate, giving it a nice stucco texture. Now, if you wanted to, you could leave it just like that and it makes a statement all its own. But uh, here on this channel, we always take it one step further, right? So from there, I added another half inch to three quarter inch layer of where I'm placing my rocks. I then took the edge of my trowel and drew where I wanted my rocks to be. Then I simply rounded the edges over. Now after that, you can get real creative with textures. You can use the edge of your hand or use the mason brush to give it some dimples or even use the damp sponge. But after I do all that, I like to take my nice flat trowel and hit a couple edges to make some flat spots. And then that's pretty much it. If this is your first time doing this, I highly recommend mixing up in quarter batches and using set control until you get used to that really quick set time. Oh, also, this is very important. After you're done, make sure to water cure for one hour to avoid surface cracks. And I've said it before and I'll say it again, I am no artist, you can do this, I promise. <laughs> this is another one of those projects where I cannot wait to see what you guys come up with. Now these little platforms, these are very simple. They are eight and a half inch by eight and a half inch. Um, just go watch my concrete countertops in one hour video and this will tell you exactly how to do this. As I am demolding this, I am realizing that I should have put some sort of spacer in the middle for the water line and the gas line. So now I'm gonna have to uh, drill out a hole, which no big deal, we'll figure it out. But uh, whatever. Make it easier on yourself and put a spacer in there. But again, just gluing it with flexible construction adhesive. Chiseling the sides is very simple. Now just snake your water line through and snake your propane line through. Hook up your propane line to the bottom of the bowl and glue the bowl in place. Then of course, glue your other bowls in place. Also, Rick from Easy Fire Pits says it's a good idea to put some pea gravel or something uh, in the bowl as an insulation between the fire and the concrete bowl. Might be a good idea to put some screen material in there. I also want to dress the bottom skirt up a little bit with, with some river rock. Oh my God, that is gonna look so good. It's probably gonna be very helpful to prime it by filling up all the bowls and the reservoir. Now some fire glass. I think that's it. Let's give it a try. Oh, oh, oh. 
<laughs> the fountain works perfect. I am very, very happy. Let's see if the fire feature starts. Obviously, we can paint this, stain this, seal this, whatever you want to do, but that's going to have to be for another video. <laughs> so that's it. Really not that bad of a project. And what's great about this is that it lends itself to so many different possibilities and so many different modifications. You can go as big with this as you want, or you can go as small. Now, this particular project, with all the materials that I ended up using, this did end up costing about $348. But you don't have to get as elaborate as I did. You don't have to have a fire feature, but you could really take this idea and run with it. And what a great conversation piece. So that's it for this video. If you liked it, please hit the like button. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please think about doing so. I promise you won't regret it. And I'll see you in the next one. I love this. I loved it. I was gonna do the sledgehammer thing again, but mm -mm, not not this one.